Hi lovely people, another rainy day from the south coast of England. So if you hear um, some noise in the distance, it's probably just the rain. So let's get started um, with this video. And I was gifted another vintage treasure and that is YSL Yves Saint Laurent Opium. Um, Actually, I've no, okay, this is the Eau de Toilette um, and this is how it comes. It's got the gold and brown lid and this is how the spray bottle looks. Now, I think this one is vintage and I say that because I've also got, this is how the newer version looks. This is the Eau de Parfum. Um, and this is how the newer one looks and you can see it's got like the um, batch code blah 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 I'll get into that in a moment um, so yes I was gifted this by the same lady who gifted me the um, Chanel Eau de Cologne and um, yes I'm really happy um, and I think that's like it's full it, you can see like this one is full so really happy about that and let's get stuck in. So I'm really excited about this because I am very familiar with this perfume. It's been in my life for as long as I can remember. Um, and um, I've got a lot of memories attached to this. Um, yeah, let, let's just get on. So um I'm about to butcher the um, <laughs> perfumer's names. Now, if people do not get your knickers in a twist, because my name, people mispronounce it all the time. I do not have an English name. People mispronounce my name all the time. And um, I just, you know, deal with that, you know. Um, so uh, the perfumers for the this one which was created in 1977 so it's a 70s perfume um this one um the perfumers are jean louise and i think the surname is um Cizac or shizak not sure about that one and raymond also, the name is different to um, difficult to pronounce. Um, Shailen or Shalon, I don't know. Um, that's the perfumers. The notes on this, <laughs> this is like a long. I'm not going to go into all the notes. I'm going to put them here so that you can. Um, look the notes up um, because it you know the notes are so long um, however I will pick out what I detect in this so I'm going to um, I'm going to what I found is um, so when you get these vintages and when you're gifted them, if you're fortunate enough to be gifted them or if, if you find them in a second-hand charity shop um, what do you call it in America? Thrift shop and all this stuff. If you come across this, the the first thing I would say is do this. It's my little hack, okay? Just spray it a couple of times to get that musty, fusty out there. And then when you spray it... Yeah, see, this is like... Um, when I first sprayed this... Or not even sprayed it when I opened this up and just smelt it from here it had a really like funky smell it it didn't smell very pleasant let's just put it that way and then what I did um I sprayed it a um, couple of times and it did it doesn't smell that great on the skin however when you spray it a couple of times like just into the air just to um, get rid of that kind of funk, if you will. 
Yeah, I can smell the funk. Um, that's the thing with these old timers, you know. The, the beginning notes, some of them are gone. They are buried in the past. Um, so you have to um, deal with that. So what I would say is this is, um, so I'm just to let you know, I am looking at Fragrantica. So um, just for reference sake of this um, video, this is a considered a warm, spicy, amber, woody, balsamic, aromatic, powdery, smoky, sweet and fresh, spicy fragrance. Wow. <laughs> it is. It is all those things and more. So um, let's just um, put this on now. So I'm going to apply this to this wrist here. And the new one. Now, I just want to say that people um, completely like, you know, they really slag this one off, you know, um, the newer version and say it's not nice. But actually, when I got this, um, I've worked for um, Yves Saint Laurent years ago, and I remember all of this. And I have to say that. Um, I personally, when I first, because I hadn't smelled opium in years, okay, and so when I had this one, it was gifted to me also, um, when I went on my travels, it was gifted as a, you know, but anyway, um, when I smelt this, it's not like you can't tell that, oh, this is not opium, this is not the original, people complain, it's watered down, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> get over it people I mean these formulations are not always going to change because of the regular you know regulations blah 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 and um, but um, I would say that it was very recognizable I would say that I st you know I still love it I love the smell of it. it this really really suits my skin very well and works with me very well however this one may be a different story so let's get stuck in I'm going to say something quite, um, it smells sour right now. <laughs> That's all I, I'm not even going to attempt to smell this one because I know what this one smells like, but in comparison, I don't want to compare them right now. This just smells sour. So all the top notes are probably all gone. Um, for reference um, sake, um, the top notes are clove and ooh, this is jumping around. Um, cloves, pepper, coriander, West Indian bay rum, um, no bay, sorry, not bay rum, um, plum, jasmine, mandarin, orange, bergamot, citruses. So um, they've, I don't smell that. I do smell the clove. Um, it's still there and I smell the pepper. Cardamom is there. <laughs> I mean, these are all things that I'm familiar with because I cook with, I cook, I bake cakes and things like that. And I make curries and, and different things. So that's still quite present, even though it, it smells a bit off at the top. I'm not going to lie. It, it does smell a bit off. Um, now, I have given this um, a little bit of a wearing and I have to say it takes a while when you, we go into the a dry down of this um it starts to become warmer and um it starts to res have some kind of resemblance of what it is intended to be which is a very beautiful um warm um sensuous and um, perfume so is very rich, very opulent. Um, it's a captivating scent, in my opinion. Um, oh, I started to smell really nice now. Um, it does have a very, um, 
these vintages have a very dated kind of scent to them. I've mentioned this before, but I really have to um, reiterate um, that just so that you know that when you are buying vintages, this is what you're going to experience is that kind of vintage smell. Personally, I really love it. I don't, I've, I've mentioned this before, I don't like the current offerings. I don't like the sugary sweet business going on. I, I don't like it. I feel like there's a lot less complexity um, in newer modern perfumery. And um, some of the really overly sweet ones do give me a headache. Um, funny enough, these old vintages don't. I don't get that with it. Um, so, so um, what I really get from this, if I'm really honest, is really warm. It, I get more than anything patchouli, which I love. So if you don't like patchouli, you're not going to like this. I get patchouli, um, the, benzo the benzoin, um, labdanum. Um, vanilla is there it has a slight sweetness which I think that the vanilla um, is really nice because it smooths everything out because if you have all this spice going on like you know a spice bomb kind of thing going on I feel like it can be too um, uh, like I say, when you make curries or you make cakes, it can it can have that. And like the all the modern um, formulations of of perfumes, um, uh, what, what do they call them? Gourmand, and um, this smells nothing like that. And I think that the reason this smells nothing like that is because it's more balanced with the deeper notes, the patchouli, the apopanox. Uh, Popanax, sorry, um, and the musk, um, the cedar and vetiv vetiver, and it's got a note of coconut at the base. Um, I had the pleasure of going to uh, an event yesterday um, with some really beautiful women there, um, and um, one of the ladies that I got talking to, um, she what she was making a lot of her own products and things like that with lots of essential oils which I've done some training in essential oils back in the day and so we were having this lovely conversation about vanilla and the extract um, of vanilla and how um, it can really um, give a structure to other notes um, as well as the, uh, she had some really nice cedar wood, um, which I find anything with a bit of um, cedar wood and uh, what's it called, vetiver, um, can lean, not overly masculine, but they can, um, I feel like that's where it, it varies in, um, it starts staring into, um, Men can wear this, basically, is what I'm trying to say in a nutshell. Men can wear this because I feel like it's got those bassy notes. So a man can wear this. Um, it's very delicious is the way I want it, but not in a um, edible way. Just a very, it's a very sensual experience we're having here. So yes, I get the sandalwood. It's got myrrh in it. I love myrrh. Oh my God. I do detect that in there. Um, it has musk and tolu balsam. So it's very balsamic, yes. It is a very deep, complex, layered fragrance. I'm going to smell this one. I mean, really, there isn't, um, you can't really compare them. Well, I, I am doing that, but you can't compare them because this is the Eau de Toilette and this is the Eau de Parfum. However, that being said, the Eau de Toilette to me comes across more like an Eau de Parfum or even um, a concentrate, um, like a pure perfume concentrate because this one is, um, is vintage. 
so it has more of a really hefty heavy base this one in comparison to this is just um it's got obviously it's got all its um top notes in intact however it's more area um area it's more airy <laughs> Um, so I'm going to this um, one here. This um, Eau de Parfum is from, um, according to Fragrantica, 2009. This perfume was uh, made for women, um, which I I would say that um, I kind of disagree with that. I think that men can wear this for sure. I don't feel this is specifically um, a woman's um fragrance I can see this on the man I think the vintage one of this if men can get their hands on this one this one um, is what more than this one because this is kind of airy unless you wanted that it's this one has more structure and base and like it's really resinous and heavy balsamic but This one is more f kind of, um, it's more fluffy. So um, yeah, this has very similar notes, obviously. Uh, this one here, um, but some of the notes are taken out. It look, it, some of them, like the Mandarin orange. Hmm, I don't think that's in here, this one. Um, it does have an orangey, um, these have like, um, to me, I, I think a lot of people may identify uh, these perfumes with like a winter and a Christmas. I say wear what you like, when you like, it, it really has no bearing on, you know, because I don't think perfumes are necessarily seasonal, that you wear them when you want. But I do feel like there is, um, I can see how people might find this um, Christmassy because of the um, the clothes and what, clothes and what have you, because that could be associated with like kind of Christmassy kind of scent, if you get my drift. So yes, this one, um, let me just see who the perfumer is on 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 this these man men are they even alive i don't know stefano pilate that's what i do at the gym <laughs> and um fabian baron i think advertising okay I think that's you can't really see I wish they would put that a bit more clearer make it a bit clearer but anyway the point is that they are not worlds apart people say oh you know they smell um completely different uh, this one is watery blah 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 no you can tell that these are from the same family that the same DNA is running there is a thread that i mentioned in my last review with chanel there is a thread that runs through them it's very apparent to me in the dry down now they smell um they're starting to smell quite um familiar i would just say that that pungentness um the pungency and all that i would say that that's starting to um, dissipate. I would say if you're going to wear these vintage perfumes, put them on a good 20 to 30 minutes before you leave your house <laughs> because you're going to scare people away because it, because of the musty, dusty uh, quality in there. You're going to scare people. So just, you know, don't leave your house for at least 30 minutes or 20 minutes if, if you can do that. But I can still smell the mustiness of this, but it's starting to um, calm down. So 
the longevity of this one is insane it's on me when i first got this i sprayed um literally like this was in the dead of winter when i when i put this on and it was like freezing cold like really cold and i sprayed one spray here um i think i did one here and one here and it lasted me i put that on in the morning and before i went to bed so put it on, say, like maybe 8.30 in the morning and I went to bed at maybe 10 o'clock or so. It was still going. It was still strong. And that's the new one. So when people say it's weak, um, I don't know what they mean because on me, I, I got like a long duration of lovely fume on, on my skin. This one equally is very long lasting but you don't get the top notes so um you know you're kind of missing something there i would say also something else that i notice is the newer one smells more powdery there is a lot of powder that i smell in, in this one and I feel like that's what makes it a bit softer even though this is an eau de parfum it the the powdery kind of quality softens it and makes it quite um um airy like uh, let me just see I'm looking for something I'm looking for the aldehydes because I I feel like it's got that in it but according to this uh, fragrantica it doesn't have the uh, um aldehydes in there oh okay sorry it does have um this one does have the um mandarin orange i didn't think it did um but it does so overall i would say that this um vintage eau de toilette um if you see it somewhere i think it's worth it if you're a big fan of um yves Saint Laurent, opium if you're a big fan of um that designer house and this particular um, perfume i would say it's worth getting i'm so fortunate to have received this it's a full body full body <laughs> it's not wine <laughs> it's a full bottle and this is going to last me a long time because you don't need much like i've sprayed one here one here that's me for the day um, and I'll probably just put one here but to be honest this is floating around me quite a lot I can smell it it's in the air and well I sprayed in the air so that's why but um, okay they're starting to smell very similar now so um, even if you come across the eau de toilette it is pretty potent stuff um, Yes, I've also had the um, privilege back in the days when I worked for Yves Saint Laurent, I had the privilege of testing the perfume. I owned the pure perfume, the one with the tassel and, and all that. Um, I've owned that. Um, I forgot to mention in my last video, I also owned um, Eau Premier. Actually, I when I worked for Chanel years ago, um, I was given when it launched a free bottle and I didn't really like the Eau Premier because I found it to be, um, sorry I'm di I digress here, but um, I found it to be too light, too airy. I was using it as air freshener. Yes, inexpensive, but I, I was giving it, um, I was, it was given to me um, for free um and i ended up giving it to a friend of mine who said please don't use it as air freshener <laughs> so i passed it on to a lovely friend of mine and she um had the privilege of using it um i prefer the um concentrations of um chanel number no. five that i have now but going back to this these beauties i would say that um they are right up my alley um I've grown up smelling this around me with um, like 
my elders around me. I love the smell of um, old vintage perfumes. I love a lot of vintage things. If you're not into that, if you don't like heavy perfumes, if you don't like your musk and sandalwood and patchouli and cloves and spice and cinnamon and mandarin orange and this, that and the other, if you don't like that, you are not going to like any of these. You have to love that kind of a structure of um, a perfume. You, you have to love something that has depth layers complexity that's to me that's the true lover of an opium perfume that's what i have to say about that if you don't like that you're not going to like these if you're into your airy fairy citrusy forget it if you're into i think someone who likes a gourmand but likes um a twist like a um if you're open to like something that has a bit of a twist, like um, a, something that has um, a bit of a spice uh, uh, thrown in, then you might appreciate these. You might do. Um, you have to keep an open mind and an open heart, guys. So that's it. I see you in the next one.